Breath of the Wild sequel is taking a little while. I know that isn't any news to you, but every time I think about the game now, I can only wonder, why is it taking so long? I'm still eager to hear more about the sequel, but with such long gaps between tidbits of news, I feel like more and more people lose excitement for the sequel. From disappointment to frustration, a lot of people feel differently about the lack of news in recent months, and while I'm still holding out for the grand reveal, I can understand people's distress. I mean, a lot of people got on board the Nintendo Switch on day one with Breath of the Wild, and without that game the launch could have been much different. It's a special game to many people, and many people are hoping for a just as special sequel. But why haven't we seen more of it by now? Well, this is just as hard for me to guess as anyone else, but I do have thoughts on why that may be. To better understand the marketing and release of Breath of the Wild 2 though, I think we should examine those aspects of the original Breath of the Wild. So let's take a look back to... a decade ago. As far as we know from interviews with the developers, Breath of the Wild's development began right after Skyward Swords did, in around 2011. They listened to feedback about having a more interconnected world, contrary to the very linear routes between areas in Skyward Sword. This is one of the fundamental aspects in defining Breath of the Wild's world, and one of the few things we know of the game's direction since the very beginning. Now, we didn't hear much about the game until 2014, when the very first teaser trailer for Breath of the Wild dropped. Some interviews were coming in around that time with series producer IG Aonuma. Bear in mind, this was around three years after the game apparently began development. In one such interview, he talked about how expectations for puzzles in the series had turned to things like block-pushing puzzles to open doors, or things of that nature, and how the new game would be rethinking puzzles and dungeons. And this certainly held true. Breath of the Wild had far more complicated and unique puzzles than any prior Zelda games. The teaser itself is certainly recognizable as Breath of the Wild, Link looks almost identical to how he does in the final game, and we see elements that ended up in the final game like guardians, ancient arrows, and horses. What didn't end up in the first game, though, was a 2015 release. The first teaser ended by showing the year 2015, implying that the game would release in that year. This was certainly something to look forward to. The trailer showed a game that looked pretty complete at the time, and compared to the final game, you might not notice a lot of differences. Nevertheless, the game did in fact get delayed, and delayed again. We did see some gameplay during the 2014 Game Awards event, and watching that footage, you can definitely tell how the game was refined between then and now. At that time, the Sailcloth was a placeholder for what ended up being the Paraglider, and Link's stamina bar was actually a bar next to his heart meter instead of a stamina wheel. A lot of other mechanics were very close to how they ended up in the final game, but despite their confidence that it would come out in 2015, it simply was not the case. Funnily enough, at the time of writing this, I can't find any official statement on when the game got delayed past 2015. During that year's E3, Triforce Heroes was announced, and Breath of the Wild seemed to almost get swept under the rug for a time, especially as the Wii U and 3DS were clearly on the decline as consoles. I like Triforce Heroes as a game, but I feel like its timing was incredibly unfortunate here. As people were waiting for the big news on Breath of the Wild, a totally different, far smaller adventure was coming out the year that the big game was promised. It seemed like the kind of game to tide everyone over to Breath of the Wild, but in comparison, it was clearly not as big of a deal. Not to mention there were already three Zelda adventures on the 3DS, not including Virtual Console. In other words, 2015 was a year of silence on the Breath of the Wild front. But, in 2016, the game made its glorious return. I can't actually watch this big reveal trailer without tearing up a little in joy. If you compare this trailer to what we'd seen of the game up until that one, you would know why it took a couple years more. So many new environments were shown off, pretty much all identical to the final product, and we got a nice display of how the game's physics engine could be utilized in so many ways, especially with the Sheikah Slate. Many of Breath of the Wild's core features would only truly be understood once the game came out, but I think the most important thing got across. This game looked awesome, and everyone was ready to get their hands on it. During that year's E3, it was confirmed that Breath of the Wild was slated for 2017, and fortunately for us, it did not get delayed again. Alongside Nintendo's new console, 
Breath of the Wild took off like a Guardian rocket ship, surpassing every other Zelda game in sales and becoming a flagship title for the Nintendo Switch. I mean, the game has sold, what, 25 million copies now? That's insane. Truly, the wait was worth it. But will it be worth it again? Now Breath of the Wild is getting a sequel, one that has a lot in common with its predecessor when it comes to how little we've seen of it. Our first glimpse of the sequel came in 2019, when a teaser trailer for the game showed up in that year's E3. I don't need to explain this trailer again for you, but man, it gave me the heebie-jeebies the first time I saw it, that's for sure. That trailer was followed by plenty of interviews about the sequel, and we learned that the sequel actually stemmed from a surplus of ideas for Breath of the Wild and its DLC. So conceptually, this game was in the works the moment they finished Breath of the Wild's DLC, if not sooner. In addition, the game is going to reuse the same engine, which I certainly can't complain about. Not only does that give them a solid foundation for the new game, it also helps them focus on world building, story aspects, and expanding on what the engine established. In other words, it's a great starting point for the game. And then, of course, we had the year known as 2020. You know all about the stuff that happened then. Games, announcements, everything in the gaming industry, and basically the whole world got wacky that year. We had Shadow Drop announcements of first-party titles like Paper Mario The Origami King and Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, and Nintendo Directs went completely absent for over a year's time. To assume that things were going normally for that year would likely be inaccurate. Fortunately, Age of Calamity was able to release in the November of that year, providing a new, if not divisive, experience for Breath of the Wild's fanbase. However, the wait for the sequel continued on, leaving an entire year without substantial news on the game. The first half of 2021 was much the same. It held no news for the sequel, and for most people, Age of Calamity was already old news. Thankfully, hope was revived when the Nintendo Direct appeared suddenly in February. Now there was a better chance for some big, first-party reveals with a bunch of hype and excitement. Sadly, we didn't get the sequel, but we did at least get Skyward Sword HD. Another appetizer for the main course, but by this point, most people were tired of sitting at the table. If we could only see things moving our way, that would make a difference, wouldn't it? And then, the most recent teaser. Not a full reveal, but enough to get us through a month or two without losing all hope in the Zelda series. This trailer proved that we wouldn't be exclusively retreading the old Hyrule from the first game, but also showed off some new mechanics that will certainly be important to the sequel. A good point of comparison would be that they'll likely operate similarly to the Sheikah Slate, being integral to some puzzles and useful in many scenarios throughout the game. This trailer was reassuring, as it gave a better idea of how far along the game had come. But how close are we now? Well, if we want to compare, I would say that 2019 was the sequel's 2014. We got our first real look at the game after a couple of years of development. 2020 would be like the sequel's 2015, a year without news and an unexpected delay, but it had a new game in the meantime. And 2021 would be the sequel's 2016, the year before launch with a better look at the game. The main reason I believe they haven't given us a better look so far largely comes down to Nintendo's marketing strategy as a whole. They've already got a lot lined up for the first half of this year. Kirby, Splatoon 3, Switch Sports, Mario Strikers, Mario and Rabbids, Fire Emblem Warriors, and Advance Wars are all coming sometime of this year, and most of them coming before July. If Breath of the Wild 2 was announced in full too early, one of two outcomes would almost be certain. It would either bury those other games in its own hype, or it would get lost in the shuffle with so many other first-party titles. My guess is a balance of the two would occur, where smaller games would suffer from the sequel's hype, and larger ones would be mildly impacted, but the same would occur for Breath of the Wild 2. If they wait to do a full reveal until a regular summer Nintendo Direct, most of those games will be out of the way by then. They could then start the Direct by giving the final news on Splatoon 3, things in between like updates on Xenoblade Chronicles and Mario and Rabbids, show off some new announcements as well, and end off with the big news and the full reveal of Breath of the Wild 2, all without feeling too crammed full of big games. Mid-year Directs are usually a good place to show off a lot of new information about known games anyway, as has often happened in the past. And if a lot of big games get revealed at the same time, that's okay. I imagine some or most of them will be released in 2023 anyway, leaving plenty of breathing room for the other titles. As for a potential delay for the release date, I don't think that's likely to be an issue. 
As others have observed, Nintendo has maintained in their financial reports that the sequel is still coming this year, so they seem to be rather confident in their timing both publicly and privately. They were careful not to release a second teaser before things were ready, waiting over a year to follow up on the first one. The game engine is already established too, so a lot of the work has already been done in advance. If they were to delay the game, I imagine something must have gone terribly wrong behind the scenes. But this late in the game and with a recent announcement as far as the year goes, I think we would know if such a thing had occurred. The last thing to mention would be the announcement of new Pokemon titles, apparently slated for this year. Now, they have a lot of options with this duo of games as far as when to release them. If I had to guess, Breath of the Wild 2 will release mid-November, and the new Pokemon titles will take a spot either in September alongside Xenoblade Chronicles 3, or in early December. I'm not an expert on this kind of stuff, but they can definitely release both in the same year. It's just a matter of leaving some breathing room between games that have audiences in common, and with two of Nintendo's biggest franchises, that's definitely something they have on their radar. Who knows though? Both games could end up released in the same month. It'll certainly be a big holiday season for Nintendo regardless. Just, just chuck a bunch of games into September and see what happens. Throw Mario Odyssey 2 in there as well while you're at it. All of this to say, I am still pretty sure we're gonna see the big reveal this year. The development of the game seems to have been given plenty of time, learning from the process of making Breath of the Wild. As much as I would have liked to see it sooner, I'm very eager to see what they've been working on for the last couple of years in its entirety. If it even approaches the grand reveal for the first game, I think we're in for a treat, and the developers have proven before that they can definitely get the job done. The only thing remaining is a little patience, a little longer to wait, and we're on track to see the game this year. By November, we might just have the sequel in our hands. For now though, I'll have to simply replay Breath of the Wild. I'm in no hurry. Maybe this time I'll get all the Korok seeds, learn some new glitches, practice a speedrun or two. With how big the game is, I think I can wait a little longer. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time you're in the Legend Zone.